Howdy, partners. Saddle up for a trip back to 1942. Ooh, 1942. With a film called Arizona Stagecoach. You find folks said this one in. A B-Western classic. And I'm ready to see what nuggets of gold we can find in this here flick. We'll be talking about those tough-as-nails cowboys, oh, yeah. the sneaky outlaws, and a little peek into how these films kept folks entertained way back when. I find it interesting you picked this one. Arizona Stagecoach is actually part of a series. A series? From Monogram Pictures, the Range Busters series. Range Busters, huh? Sounds like a hoot. They are. Think fast-paced, okay. low-budget, and action-packed. So let's meet these Range Busters, who are our heroes. Well, we've got Crash Corrigan, Dusty King... And the one and only Alibi Terhune. Crash, Dusty, and Alibi. Hmm. Now, those are some rootin' tootin' names. What are these fellas up to when the story kicks off? They're living the dream on their ranch, the Flying R Ranch. The Flying R, I like it. When trouble comes a-knockin'. Oh, no. What kind of trouble? An old friend, Larry Meadows, he shows up with his niece, Dory. Uh-oh, family visit. That always spells trouble. And it gets even more tangled. Their town's being picked on, harassed by a whole gang of outlaws. Outlaws terrorizing the town. Yeah classic western problem what story is connection to all this well her brother ernie he's mixed up with this no good gang so we got family drama a and d a wild west showdown now that's what i call entertainment right the sources mention something about these characters being archetypes what's that all about are they like those Cookie cutter cowboys and villains. That's a good way to put it. Okay. It's true. The film sticks to those familiar Western tropes. Okay. Tropes like what? You know, like the toughest nails hero. Right. The damsel in distress, the villain you just love to hate. Gotcha. So they move the story along, but there's not a whole lot going on beneath the surface. They serve their purpose, but you're right. Not a lot of depth. Like with Ernie. You know, him being caught between his family and this outlaw game. I bet there's a story there. There is. Like, what if we could see his struggles? Oh, I know. You know, is he drawn to that outlaw life? Yeah. Or maybe there's something more, like he's lost or searching for a place to belong. Absolutely. I mean, that could add a whole other level to the film. Exactly. It makes you think about how those B-Westerns always stuck to that simple good versus evil story. Right. But maybe even with that, they could have added a little nuance. Oh, for sure. That Ernie storyline, that could have been a chance to play with those classic character types and make them oh, yeah, yeah. more well-rounded. More human, you know? Yeah. All right, so we've got a plot that's moving along thanks to these archetypes. What about the filmmaking itself? What did you think about the way it was shot and directed? Well, the sources say that Arizona Stagecoach visually does capture those sweeping landscapes of the American West. Okay. And there are some nice shots, but they don't really try anything new. So nothing too fancy. Mm. Just getting the job done. But what about the action? Those shootouts, chases, they got to be pretty epic, right? Arizona Stagecoach does deliver the action. Uh. We got shootouts. Horseback chases, the whole shebang. But the sources, they call the action a little clumsy. Clumsy? Like they messed up the stunts or something? No, not exactly. It's more about how the scenes are filmed. I think modern audiences were so used to seeing gritty, intense action. Arizona Stagecoach doesn't quite have that same realism or that edge-of-your-seat tension. I can see that. Like a shootout in a dusty saloon, that's got to be heart-pounding with a modern director at the helm. Right. Close-ups, quick cuts, maybe some slow motion to really crank up the drama. You're getting it. But back then, things were different, I guess. Definitely. They filmed those action scenes more like a stage play. For folks back then, it probably worked just fine. You know, thinking about it, it's like comparing a stage play to a big blockbuster movie. Right. Both exciting. Yeah. But they just use different ways to get you hooked. It's all about the style and the time, I guess. So we got our action, but it's a bit different from what we're used to. Speaking of context, does the film tackle any of those big, weighty issues that were happening in the early 1940s? Well, it does touch on themes like staying true to your word, loyalty, and how communities stick together. But Mm -hmm. from what I've gathered, it doesn't really dive deep into the social or political stuff happening at the time. That's interesting. I mean, the early 1940s, that was a crazy time. World War II was raging. You think maybe they wanted to give folks a break from all that Mm. pure escapism, Mm -hmm. you know, just a way to forget about your worries for a while. That makes sense, especially for those B-Westerns that were churned out quickly. Yeah, like a little vacation from reality. A way to step away from a world at war and into a world of cowboys and outlaws. Sometimes it's all you need. A good old-fashioned story. (laughs) For sure. Where the good guys win and everything's a little simpler. 
Arizona Stagecoach seems to fit that bill. It's a world with clear good guys and bad guys, thrilling action and familiar characters. It's like a perfect escape for folks who just needed a break from all the complicated stuff happening in the world. So we've got our plot, those classic characters, action that's a bit old school, and a focus on entertainment. What about the music? Does the score make you feel like you're right there in the Wild West? From what I've read, the score is described as functional. Functional. So it gets the job done, but nothing too memorable. Pretty much. It's amazing how music can make or break a film. When you hear those big orchestral themes in a Western, you're instantly transported to those wide open plains. Oh, you're so right. I mean, think about those legendary Western scores. I know. They add so much emotion, suspense. Even some humor to the story. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like Arizona Stagecoach missed a chance to really use music to make the film even better. Yeah. So the score's not winning any awards, but it serves its purpose. It seems they prioritize other things over a truly impactful score. They could have made it a more immersive experience, something you'd remember long after the film ended. Hmm, I see. It's a bit of a missed opportunity. Yeah. Makes you wonder, though, how those scores, even the not-so-great ones in these B-Westerns, might have shaped later Westerns. That's a good thought. Like, did those composers way back when, did they set up some musical trends that we still hear today? I think a lot of those classic Western sounds you mentioned, the trumpets, the fast-paced rhythms, even the harmonica, they all have their roots in those early B-Westerns. So even though Arizona Stagecoach's score isn't anything to write home about, it's still part of this bigger musical story that's still going on. Like those early composers, they created the musical language of the West, and then later composers took it and added their own style to it. So we've got this low-budget film, familiar characters, action that's a little different, and a score that's just kind of there. But you were saying earlier that these films offered folks an escape. Yeah. Do you think that's why people still enjoy B-Westerns today? Nostalgia plays a part, for sure. I think for a lot of viewers, these films bring back memories of a simpler time, that romanticized version of the American West. Like stepping back into a world where the good guys always win and the problems are a little easier to solve. And in a world that can feel pretty overwhelming, that kind of escape can be really attractive. It makes me think about Ernie again. His story could have added a whole layer of like moral complexity that we don't always see in these films. Right. Like what if we saw him really wrestling with his choices? He's tempted by that outlaw life, but he also cares about his family. That kind of internal conflict would have made him a much more interesting character. We could have seen how the promise of freedom and adventure that comes with being an outlaw, how that might appeal to someone who's feeling lost. And how those choices affect everyone, not just Ernie, but the whole community. It's too bad. Arizona Stagecoach didn't explore that more. It could have been more than just an action-adventure story. Yeah, but there's still something to be said for those straightforward narratives. Yeah. They can be comforting in their own way, knowing that good will triumph over evil. And that things will work out in the end. Right. Speaking of context, how does Arizona Stagecoach line up with the real history of the American West? Is it accurate or more of a Hollywood version? Well, B-Westerns often showed a kind of idealized West. Okay. They focused on adventure, heroes, and good conquering evil, but they didn't always dig into the more complicated aspects of that time. So we shouldn't expect a totally accurate picture of what was happening in the early 1940s. Probably not. These films were made to entertain, mm -hmm. right? A distraction from everyday life, especially with a war going on. It makes sense that people would want that kind of escape. With all the turmoil in the world, a story about cowboys and outlaws must have been a nice break. It's like stepping into a different world for a little while. And Arizona Stagecoach gives you that escape with its simple story, its action, and its characters. It's a glimpse into what people were watching back then, what entertained them during a pretty tough time. But even with that focus on escapism, there are hints of deeper themes that could have been explored more. Yeah, things like moral ambiguity, the struggle between loyalty and ambition, and how our choices shape our lives. It's interesting to think how these B-Westerns, even with their limitations, might have paved the way for Westerns that really dove into those themes. Like they set the stage for a more complex understanding of the West and all the stories we tell about it. Well, we've covered a lot of ground here. We talked about the story, the characters, those action scenes, and how Arizona Stagecoach fits in with all those other Westerns out there. But before we ride off into the sunset, I'm curious, what's your big takeaway from this film? You know, it's fascinating to me that a film like this, made on a shoestring budget and using a pretty standard formula, 
can still get us thinking. This is true. It's like we've been panning for gold in a creek that's been worked over pretty good. I like that. We might not find a huge nugget, right. but there are still these little flecks of gold that shine when you hold them up to the light. And those little flecks can still be valuable. Absolutely. And if, if yeah. we think about how Westerns have changed over time, Arizona Stagecoach, it's kind of like a stepping stone. Okay. It might not have done anything revolutionary, right? but it took those elements that people loved about Westerns and it polished them up. Those heroes, the villains, the wide open spaces. It's like they set the stage for later filmmakers to come along and make those stories even richer. And that's what makes studying these films so interesting. We see how the genre grows, how those early simple stories led to the more complex and thought-provoking Westerns we watch today. So for our listeners who are getting ready to watch Arizona Stagecoach, what should they keep in mind? I'd say go into it like you're traveling back in time. Yeah. You're not just watching a movie. You're stepping back into 1942. Let yourself get swept away to those Saturday matinees where folks went to forget about their worries. It's like finding an old photograph tucked away in an attic. <laughs> it might not be the most technically perfect photo, but it gives you a glimpse into a different time. And who knows, you might even find yourself enjoying those B-Westerns. They might not be cinematic masterpieces, yeah. but they have a special place in film history. Please visit our streaming service at lostandfoundfilms.uscreen.io. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell for our notifications of our future films. Thank you.